Hi everyone, welcome back to the SG Risk Watcher channel. Everyone always talks about Grand Seiko versus Rolex. Today we're gonna do something different. Uh, we're gonna compare these two popular brands, Grand Seiko versus Omega. And uh, so on my left, I have the Grand Seiko SBGR051, a discontinued model, as well as uh, on my right hand, I have the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra 38mm, also an older version. So let's start with the Grand Seiko first. So you can see that the Grand Seiko uh, has a case diameter of 37mm, lug to lug of 44.3mm, and a thickness of 13.3mm. So fairly thick. Grand Seiko's and as well as Omega you see later on, uh, kind of known for having this uh, thick movement and I think that's the main weakness of both brands that is the thickness for Grand Seiko they're starting to address this now with the latest 9SA5 movements which are way more advanced I mean but that's a different story for another time okay so uh, the water resistance of this Grand Seiko is 100, milli 100 meters which is good enough for everyday use and uh, you, you can swim with it fairly safely without any worries so if you move um, Grand Seiko is most well known for its Zaratsu polish a word that's always been associated with it and that means they actually do a, a hand, hand applied polishing on a polish wheel and they do it to the size of the case as well as the, uh, the hands and the markers on the watch, which you can see. Uh, polish to perfection in a level that you really don't get to see even at a very high end. So that is uh, Grand Seiko's trademark. Grand Seiko's other trademark is uh, the use of uh, pattern dials, but in this case, it's just a simple silver sunray dial. Uh, this was one of the first Grand Seiko's that was produced when Grand Seiko was relaunched in the mechanical form and well for today's purpose uh, as an everyday go anywhere do anything watch I think the DAO is good enough moving on to the bracelet it's a 3 link bracelet you can see over here with uh, polished sandal links and of course uh, of course, you get uh, solid endings. Okay, so Grand Seikos are usually criticized for their bracelets, and I would say that this bracelet is good enough, but uh, it really has the issue of lack of micro adjust, which is a problem that the Aquaterra faces as well. In terms of quality, it's, it's totally fine. I would say that it's slightly loose. Uh, the way that Grand Seiko does their bracelets and for me I don't mind it too much because my theory is that wrists are uh, wrists tend to be you know smaller at the front and thicker at the back so a little bit of flex actually makes the watch more comfortable now we we'll move on to the movement something which Grand Seiko is famous for as well and this one is the 9S65 which is their new baseline movement for all their mechanical watches. It has a uh, 4 hertz, it beats at 4 hertz, 4 times a second, and it has a single main spring which gives it powers it to 72 hours. And how Grand Seiko achieves this 72 hours of power reserve is it uses its micro manufacturing technology from the other parts of its businesses and it skeletonizes the pallet fork and the balance wheel and that gives both of it a lighter lighter weight and lighter weight means you get a more more efficient um, more a more efficient watch and that leads to it having a power, higher power reserve than its predecessor you can see there's really nice code deletion F or rather I say code the Tokyo <laughs> over at the back um, yeah, uh, nothing, nothing high horology, but uh, machine done, but uh, well executed. So, and Grand Seiko has 
accuracy standard of plus 5 minus 3 seconds a day which is one second uh, when you look at a uh, Swiss chronometer standard that is uh, plus 6 minus 4 so Grand Seiko accuracy has always been a part of Grand Seiko's identity and uh, down from when they started and they, where they competed and beat eventually beat the Swiss at their own uh, watch accuracy trials now let's move on to the popular Omega Aquaterra. This one is an older version uh, that you see and how you tell is that it has a vertical tick uh, deck stripes and as well it has a date window at 3 o'clock with a frame date. I actually like this version more than the newer ones. I know the newer ones have a horizontal uh, tick deck stripes or some of the colored ones don't even have that anymore and I think that's a shame because it uh, it, it doesn't it, some burst downs uh, are fairly common so it doesn't feel that special to me yeah so and Aquaterra the, the tick deck is so on the down always uh, remi supposed to remind us of a uh, yacht but uh, yeah I, I think it just I, I don't say on yachts but uh, that it just gives me a nice uh, feel and identity to the Aquaterra. Okay, um, let's talk about the case. It has a diameter of 38 millimeters, a lock to lock of 45 millimeters, and a thickness of 13.1 millimeters. So it's just slightly, slightly, slightly thinner than the Grand Seiko. Water resistance is a more impressive 150 meters compared to the Grand Seiko's 100 meters. And if you look at the case, you can see, uh, I think people always talk about Grand Seiko's case, and but I think, I feel that Omega's cases are really underrated. You know, for, uh, for Rolex, you get pretty standard stuff, polished on the sides, rounded. But uh, what Omega is famous for are these lion lugs, that, these lugs that twist and turn towards the edges. And you can see that the transitions between each one is really sharp. Personally, I think that uh, compared to this particular model, I, I, I feel that the transitions are sharper on the Omega versus the Grand Seiko. So, Grand Seiko, sorry, Omega not to be underestimated. Um, let's talk about the bracelet. Bracelet? on the Omega Aquaterra on this version is fully brushed, trilling. Uh, the newer ones I believe are all uh, polished in the middle and I like this older one because it's more, you know, po polished uh, bracelets tend to get attract scratches really easily but uh, this one, yeah, fully brushed and I have no problem with it. And uh, the bracelet is actually, okay, ah, this is problem, yeah. The uh, bracelet on the Omega is a butterfly class, so you see it opens both ways. Sequential closing, you close this first. Oh no. You close this first, and then you close this. There are no micro adjusts, but you get half links over here, which are smaller than a full link, and that helps you with sizing the watch. Okay, back to the down. Back to the dial, you can see that actually the dial of the Aquaterra is uh, besides having the tick deck and the applied in this applied Omega logo, is actually uh, it has the applied indices at all um, at all the hour markers except for the few clock. And you can see that these indices are actually very three-dimensional in nature. No, um, Grand Seiko is famous for its three three-dimensional markers. I think the Omega Aquaterra, this version, it, it does very well as well. In terms of hands, you can see that the Aquaterra's hands uh, play the light really well. It's actually uh, striped down the middle and polished at the side. So. 
it, it, I think you can see over here the way that it plays with the light. It does have a three-dimensional feel to it, but after studying closely, I realized that no, it's not actually three-dimensional. But still, it, it does give a very premium feel as compared to simpler hands. Uh, it's not as well done as the Grand Seiko because obviously it's not polished. This, it's not beveled the same way that it, the Grand Seiko is, but it's pretty good as well. And it's definitely more sporty in nature because of uh, the loom on the hands and as well as the indices. Although, uh, I would say it's decent but not the best because it doesn't, there's no loom, there's only loom on the end of the hands and a little bit loom on the hour marker. It doesn't go all the way. Yeah, so between the two, definitely um, the Grand Seiko has a dressier nature while the Omega has a sportier nature and the water resistance shows it as well so moving on to the movement yeah so this houses Omega's first in-house uh, uh, built from the ground up coaxial chronometer movement this isn't the newest newer Meta's uh, Meta standard but it's still pretty good as well uh, so the caliber 8500 beats at 3.5 Hz uh, 3.5 Hz compared to 4 Hz on the Grand Seiko It has a silicon balance spring which gives it a high degree of anti-magnetism It's a chronometer rated which is uh, plus 6 minus 4 seconds a day and it actually comes with Let's see over here it Actually, I'm not sure if you can catch it over here but it has a Twin barrels, let's see. Yeah, barrel one, barrel two, if you can see it here. So twin barrels means that it has two main springs uh, which power the watch. And the purpose of having two main springs is so that uh, as the problem with most main springs is that it has a lot of power when it's fully wound up and less power when it's uh, near the end. And that seems obvious, but that also affects accuracy because you tend to, to have um, too much torque at the start, that means the watch tends to run fast and then it tends to have too, it tends to run too slow towards the end of the power reserve and the purpose of having a dual main spring like I get on this watch is to avoid such a situation so this watch has a power reserve of 60 hours which is less than the Grand Seiko even though it has two main springs uh, but oops sorry but one trick that this uh, Omega Aquaterra has is this uh, and okay you can see it has a screw down crown which helps it with the better water resistance I presume is that it has a so the trick of this uh, party trick for this Aquaterra is the jumping hour movement which is very useful if you travel so you can jump the hour uh, without moving the minute hand as you move across time zones and what makes it even better is that you are able to set the date backward as well which you can't do on other watches but personally i tend to change my watches pretty often and i found that as useful as this movement this function is uh, for me spending most of the time in my own country i usually don't ex travel with like nicer watches I find it's a bit of hassle when I want to set a date because I have to jump the hour multiple times. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. So the movement of the Omega you can see as well. Uh, it doesn't come in the traditional Code de Genève, but it has its own, uh, it has its own style, this um, arabesque, I think they call it arabesque waves. To me, it looks a bit like the shell of a sea creature uh, which kind of makes sense given the, the nature of uh, the Omega Aquaterra which is uh, supposed to be for land and sea purpose. Okay, so uh, in conclusion between these two watches, uh, okay, oh, sorry, let's talk about the price. Uh, so these two watches are discontinued but um, the best comparison I can give is the retail price of their modern equivalents which uh, for the Omega would be $8,800 uh, 
and for the Grand Seiko will be $6,400 Singapore dollars yeah. so kind of close in price and um, depends on what you like the Grand Seiko definitely has a more dressy nature and the Aquaterra has a more sporty nature and as promised uh, this is my bonus content this is the Longines uh, Spirit 37mm I love this watch and uh, okay let me give you a quick spec rundown of the specs it's 37mm in diameter so very close to the both of them 44.9mm lug to lug but you can see that uh, the male end links tend to extend the watch slightly but uh, it's heavily downturned and I think it, it fits even the smallest of wrists. Likewise with the Aquaterra, it does have a slightly protruding male end link but it doesn't really affect uh, the wearability because it's already uh, really small and it's downturned. So for these long jeans, it has a thickness of 11.9mm so actually if you like a slim watch, this one actually feels significantly slimmer than both the Omega and the Grand Seiko and I think that's something that both brands which I love Omega and Grand Seiko can improve yeah. on the wrist it, I think it's no, noticeable that one millimeter plus of difference and the reason for that is that the base movement of the long jeans uh, is much slimmer and I'll get to that later on so this watch doesn't compromise on water resistance it's a hundred meters of water resistance similar to the Grand Seiko which is great for everyday use it doesn't have a screw down crown the bracelet you can see it's a solid end link okay so yeah here's a plus of the long jeans and I really love long jeans yeah, great value for money is that it has this uh, push button deployment so you can release the bracelet very quickly just by pressing this button which these higher end watches don't come with okay and this watch also comes with quick adjustment I mean this is the old-fashioned style not the kind that you get with Tudor where you can press and release these are the old ones that you use the pin and you move it but nonetheless it's great to have uh, some level of uh, adjustment uh, which is pretty critical when you are wearing a watch and that's something that I think both brands can improve on the hands are loomed and they are loomed a lot more heavily than uh, I would say the the Aquaterra in the in the in the dark. Uh, this long jeans actually is uh, significantly uh, brighter. Uh, it has a slightly yellow yellowish uh, yellow green loom, which is more of the modern style. Which you compare against the white of the Aquaterra. Okay, uh, let's talk about the dial. The dial is a blue sunburst with uh, applied indices, uh, Arabic numerals, which is different from markers uh, from both the Grand Seiko and the Omega. So this is more of a pilot style. And I love that you get a silver ring in the middle and that adds and uh, you know, there's a rehot on the inside of the ring of the dial with the mini strap. And that helps legibility a lot and it also gives the watch a greater sense of depth you can see the way the diamond indices uh, play against the silver ring that plays against the outer track it really feels very premium and you get that 5 star chronometer um, text at the bottom we'll get onto that layer and what's lovely about this watch is the date window uh, black date window at 6 o'clock it fits in nicely where the position of the numeral 6 is so it really has a good balance of, um, of design yeah so it doesn't it, the watch is uh, the dial of the watch is not disrupted so we move on to the movement uh, this one doesn't have a have a display display case back so this movement is Longines L888.4 which is basically based on uh, ETA 2892 but upgraded uh, exclusively made by ETA ETA which is the parent uh, which is 
within the same group, they are all part of the SWOT group. ETA and Longines are part of the SWOT group. And so this modified 2892 movement is made exclusively for Longines by ETA. So it beats at 3.5 Hz and it's a single, uh, single barrel movement with a silicon hair spring. So you get the anti-magnetism as well. And that's, part, that's the great benefits of being part of the SWOT group where you can get all these um, benefits in terms of uh, movement upgrades. And besides being a silicon, having a silicon hair spring, it also has a, it's also chronoma, chronometer rated, which means its accuracy is guaranteed, similar to this Omega. And power reserve wise, you get a 72 hours of power reserve, which is an upgrade of from the ETA2892, which is about, I think about 40 to 42 hours of power reserve. Yeah, and that's partly down to the lower beat rate of 3.5 Hz. Yeah. The other thing about this DAO is the second hand. I love how this uh, second hand uh, has a red tip which gives it a little pop, pop of color on the DAO. Uh, and the way that the tip of the second hand line up with the arrow, the diamond indices as it passes by. These are little attention to detail that you know, shows what a great design this this watch really is. Now, finally, the best part about uh, this Longines Spirit is that it's three thousand six hundred and seventy dollars, which is about half the price of the Grand Seiko. And wow, for this price, you are really getting a premium watch from a very historic brand. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put it down below. And uh, if you're interested, you can follow me on SG Watcher. Thank you and uh, till we see you again on the next video. Thank you.